So we're very excited to have you here tonight. I'd like to thank all of you for joining, taking time out of your schedule to be here with us. My name is Tony Morgan. I'm a PGA golf professional and I'm a managing partner of KVEST. And it's really an exciting time in golf right now for the simple fact that technology is going to allow us to build remote-based coaching programs for our players. And this technology is going to really allow you to still do what you do best, measure and assess players. But then we can start to really leverage the technology to get players changing their movement patterns. And that's really what we're going to talk about tonight. And we want to always make sure that we focus on two things. Number one, we always improve player outcomes. I think anything that we're doing, whether it's cool technology, whatever it is, if it's not real player outcomes, we have to ask ourselves why we're using it. So that's definitely a very important focus of ours. Number two, we want to help you build better business models. So we're going to talk a little bit about how many golf coaches have a time dependency. And really their revenue is based on how many hours they spend teaching a day. Well, what we're launching right now was really going to help change some of that. So there's four primary things we're going to focus on tonight. One, we're going to talk about how to assess the player's data. There's obviously a lot of different ways you can do that with pressure plates and force plates. We can look at video cameras, 3D motion system 6D. We can look at launch monitors, club data, ball data. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can assess to get the player moving in the right direction. Tonight we're going to use the KVEST system, and then we're going to talk about how we built the program over into KPlayer to get the student practicing. So once we've assessed that data, we're then going to build a biofeedback program. And the key thing that we're going to focus on with the biofeedback program is we need to make sure the biofeedback program is specific to the player. I think too many times today we're, we're launching biofeedback programs that are built for tour players and they're not built for our average golfers, meaning the ranges aren't right, the tolerances aren't right, the timers aren't right, so they're not firing out of these orientations or positions there. So we really, there's a lot of options there we want to make sure we spend some time on. Number three, we want to talk about how to export and send that program over to a player. So the great thing is now that the program's built, we can actually export that program, send it via the web, send it over to the KPlayer software, student logs in, and they can do their training. So we're going to show you exactly how that process works so you can see it firsthand. Then we're going to talk about the business models to support this. If you see this time, you go, wow, I can see this actually working at my facility. Great. So that's great that you have visibility to that. How do you make money doing this? And if we can keep players getting better and we can generate more revenue streams, we're all going to be in a great place. So as we go through some of this, there's a good chance you're going to develop some questions. And as we go, you'll see in the go to meeting box over on the right, you'll have a chat bar. So you can type in your questions as we go. If we're in a particular area, just feel free to go ahead and type that question right away. And what we'll do at the end of the presentation, we'll come back and we'll address your questions uh, in the order in which they're received. And we'll get to, obviously, as many as we can. So one of the concepts that we want to focus on tonight is this concept of measure than act. I think today we live in an environment where there's just a lot of technology out there. And it's great. Uh, but I think the best coaches in the world and the best players in the world know how to use the technology and don't get over-ramped and overwhelmed with all the data. So if we think about the term measure than act, measure, measure than act is an acronym for measure, assess, coach, and train. And so when we break these down into what we're going to be doing tonight, we're going to be using the KVEST 7 to measure and assess. I've got a player here that I've worked with for about the last year, uh, done a lot of biofeedback training, and we've made some good progress. And the reason I brought him in is he's uh, done a lot of this stuff on his own, which has really been great. The second part of this is coach and train. So once we build a biofeedback program for him, coaching is all about getting him to change his patterns for the first time. So whether I'm in the gym and I'm working out with my trainer and I'm not in the right posture, he's giving me verbal cues that I need to do. This happens all the time, or I'm giving a lesson and the right elbow is not in the right place, the hand pass off, or the posture's off. We're constantly getting our players cues. Well, now the technology is just getting to a place where it's a lot simpler 
to do this, and we're going to show you that tonight. So we want to measure and assess with KVS 7 customize the biofeedback program and coach, then we're going to let the player actually go over. I'm going to show you a new corner of my office that we're just using, which is perfect because it's not a lot of space, and probably all of you have this type of area in your facility or on your range. I'm going to show you how we built an unsupervised practice station, and then we'll talk about the business behind it. So here in just a little bit, I'm going to be introducing you to Chris. Uh, Chris is one of my students. Uh, when he first came in, he was a 21 handicap. Uh, we've been working together probably a little bit less than a year, uh, and in that time, he's down to about a 15. But the great thing is, we've only seen each other probably about six times, six or seven times. He's done a lot of this training on his own, and he's really made good progress in his full swing. Um, I think we all know scores not always indicative of full swing, and that's mainly what we've worked on. But it was pretty cool to bring him back because he was really somebody that said, hey, I understand these concepts now. I just want to be able to practice, and I sometimes just want to be able to do this on my own. And so I think we all have players like that. So Chris's main thing is he didn't have really a problem with distance. Um, definitely didn't have any problems with ball speed, but he definitely had some problems with some dispersion. Um, driver mid irons could go both directions, driver more to the right. Irons would typically club face would shut, we'd hit some shots to the left. And then when we started backing up, once again, that was an assessment that we did on TrackMan. Once we started backing up, we used the KVS for assessment. You may use video, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We used the KVS and we found really some things that were contributing to this pattern. And I actually, Chris was in here earlier this morning and I said, you know, where do you feel like you've come in the last year? And his comment was, and I'll let him speak about this later, his comment was, I just didn't know that if my timing, I think we've all heard this, if my timing wasn't on, man, it was really hard to get the club face squared impact. Well, if you look at some of the orientations his body was in, it was almost impossible for them to fire in the right sequence. And also, it wasn't putting uh, a lot of good pressure in his low back area. So I also want to make sure we hit it from that side. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into the KVS software very quickly. And I want to just show you three things about what we saw in Chris's data. And then we're actually going to bring him in in a few minutes here. And we'll actually show you how we built a biofeedback program. So I'm going to bring up the KVS software, as you can see here on your screen. And I'm going to go into the performance graphs. Now, I know all of you don't have KVS or you haven't used motion capture, so I want to make this very simple and almost tell a little story with this because I'm sure we've all seen this pattern on video. So one of the first things that we saw with Chris was his pelvis bend. This is a pelvis bend graph. So very simply, how much tilt he had in his pelvis. Now, if we look at more efficient players, we'll typically see that they have around 20 degrees of pelvis bend. It's not perfectly 20. Best players in the world probably have anywhere between 15 and 25. A lot of them, when they're pretty neutral, are close, somewhat close to 20. Chris was starting at 31. Not only was he starting at 31, but we can see the first part of that graph as it goes back is going uphill. That actually means as he starts his backswing, not only is he starting with his lower back in a pretty compromised position, actually as he starts his move, he's getting more arched. And you're going to see what that leads to in just a moment. So this was something we really worked on in time to really get this posture more neutral to dress. And it's done uh, some really great things to his ball speed, which is not what we were after. But it's really done a lot to get more center face contact and better sequencing. So that was number one, is we wanted to get that pelvis more neutral. We're going to come back in in just a moment. We're going to build this biofeedback program. But that's really the first thing that we did. Number two. This is not necessarily the order I go in. This is just the order I went in to build the program. So I'm also doing the same flow from an assessment side. So number two, let's take a look here at the kinematic sequence graph. I'm sure a lot of you that are on are familiar with this uh, or, or very familiar with this. Uh, just a quick summary. We're looking here at rotational velocities, uh, how fast the body is rotating, address top, and impact. So we've got positive velocities on the left. These are our downswing. Negative velocities are backswing. And we're looking at the red, the pelvis, the green, the trunk, and the brown is the golf club, or lead hand in our system. So 
a lot of times we look at this data, and those of you that have looked at this, you might look at this and say, hey, pretty good sequence here, all right? But if we notice, everything's definitely a little bit closer to impact. I would call this late timing of the belt, pelvis, and the trunk. And a lot of players, not that you can't have late timing, learn how to square up the club face, but a lot of players that have late timing have problems with accuracy, especially with the pelvis. And definitely, there's some power left in the tank there. But this wasn't really the root of the problem that we saw. Now we can back up here. We've got some transition sequence issues. The pelvis changed direction first then the golf club, then the upper body. So we're definitely, we've got pelvis first, but then we've got golf club. And this is definitely indicative of the next move you're going to see after this. But I still didn't think that was the main problem. If we back up here and we look at, look at, take a look at takeaway sequence, this is really, when Chris first came in, you could almost see there were some issues with his hand path and the backswing. And this was a major cause. This was definitely something that caught my eye, and that was, if we look at the backswing, remember negative velocities, the more it's going down, the faster it's rotating. So very simple here, if the red line is below the green line, we basically have a backswing where the pelvis is rotating prior to the trunk. Now, if we see some of the better players in the world, the best, and there is no perfect, there is no perfectly efficient, everybody's different, we can definitely see some riding patterns where both the segments rotate together, or we'll see a, some players have an earlier stretch, but we don't see a whole lot of players where the first move is the pelvis, where they lose the ground force, because the problem is that creates a really late stretch. If we look at his stretch here, his stretch is happening at about frame 85. By the time the upper body finally gets away from the pelvis, that's pretty late. Best players in the world, we're seeing a little bit more between frame 35 and frame 50. So it was taking a long time as pelvis went, his hand path followed inside, and then it took a while for his trunk to follow. So one of the things that we want to look at here is how we can just come over, and we're going to add a third one to this, and I'm going to show you this in live mode, how we can simply go over, load a couple drills, and I'm going to show you the third one that he got into really doing this right in live mode. So this is the K-Player software, and this is really what we want to focus on tonight. Once again, we just looked at a couple things there. But once again, you may do your assessment totally differently, do it on video, it doesn't matter. In the K-Player software now, all you have to do is click Start Training, and there's 144 activities in the software that you can now choose from. So very simple, we can load this drill, bend it address, that's going to focus on the pelvis, and then we've got a great drill in here called Takeaway Sequence. So I'm just literally going to go to the filter. I'm going to type takeaway sequence, and then I'm going to load the third drill here, and I'm going to show you that in live mode, and that's going to be bent at the top, and I'll let Chris speak about these as well. So once this program is now built, all we have to do is simply click launch. And now we're, we're literally live in the software, have Chris come on in, Chris everyone, everyone Chris. And now we can talk about how do we actually customize these programs for a player. So I think one of the things you've really got to be careful of when you're loading biofeedback drills is making sure you don't just load the standard ranges that come with it. You want to be able to customize it for your player. Not every player is going to be in the exact same, soft, in the exact same posture. They don't have the same flexibility or mobility. And a lot of times they're trying to hit different golf shots, so there's no way these averages can work for every player. This is where the coaching comes in. We just want to make the software simple enough so you can use this. So very simply, I'm going to have Chris go ahead and set up. And the first thing that we did, I'm going to take the uh, shoulders off the screen right here. We're going to take this sideways. So Chris used to get into this S posture that we saw. And you'll see right now he's right around 35 degrees. That's very close to where he was when he first came in. So the thing about S posture, if I try and leverage test him right now, he's actually pretty darn stable. I'm having a hard time pushing it over. The problem is, it's locking up his upper back. He's going to have a hard time rotating, which is one of the big reasons we saw a late takeaway sequence. This leads to that early part of the back swing. So what I like to do, is I'll get the player to set up, get him neutral, a little more knee flex here, get solid in the ground, 
Good. Get them to where you feel strong. Or feel engaged there. Good. And you'll see, all I'm trying to do is get this neutral, back neutral. Now notice if he pulls his belt underneath him too much, pull it underneath you. And now you'll notice that number is 14. Well, how do I know it's too much? Because I can easily push him over. He doesn't have any leverage in the ground. So one of the great ways you can customize pelvis bend for your players is one, when they're arched, you're going to feel it in the low back. When the core is not braced, when they get too little pelvis bend, they're going to lose ground force. So if you're using a pressure system or a force system, you're going to see the interaction with his pelvis and how it interacts with the ground. All right, so now let's get set back up. I'm going to get him nice and neutral here. I'm going to leverage test him. Good. And get where I really feel like this center of the upper back. Good. Nice and strong. And then what I do here is I set live. Okay, we're going to stand up. So now that range is customized. Even though it's pretty close to where we started, it's customized for him. Now the one thing to notice here is this is a pretty big range, 13 to 29 degrees. That means we can go back to that pelvis underneath or ground force, and we can also go really back to the lower arched position and still get the music. So here's the problem. If I'm going to leave him here training by himself and I don't tighten up these ranges, he could literally come back and say, hey, coach, I've been really working on our posture. How's it looking? And I'm right back into this old backswing move because we didn't nail the foundation. So I want to make sure I tighten up the tolerance here. And I'm going to bring this down, let's just say, 19 to 23. So that's giving him plus, plus or minus 2 degrees. All right? Very, very simple. So it's a much tighter ring, but I'll make sure you get back in one more time. Okay. Good. A lot of times, we're not training yet. I'm just making sure he has a good feeling of where it is. And once again, if you're looking at the camera right now and you're saying, hey, that's not where I put that player for posture, perfect. That's why you have that set guide live button, and you can absolutely put it anywhere you want it, and you can also change it based on the golf club that you're, they're using. So it's a driver setup or a flip wedge setup. You're obviously going to have some different postures, and you can totally change it based on the club. All right? So the next drill that we did was takeaway sequence. And uh, why don't we start this one without a golf club here? All right? So we're just going to start good posture, neutral pelvis, arms across the chest. And remember, that early move that Chris had before that we saw was really that pelvis rotating too early. And you'll see he's already really lost the stability in that trail foot. So this move is just to get a little bit of separation between his trunk and his pelvis. So he's just going to rotate slowly back. Good. And all this is called is the 2040 drill. And I'm just giving him some feedback. Go ahead, a couple more. Go ahead. Okay, a couple more. And I'm just giving him feedback. Good. Good. A couple more. Good. Good. It's just a different feel. And in a way, it's over-exaggerated, just trying to get him to separate and use his core, right? That's what we talked about a lot. Right. Uh, using the core to get an earlier separation. All right? I'm not going to change the ranges here. I would turn the numbers off the screen. He doesn't need to see those. And we're just going to simply keep those ranges exactly where they were. Now, the last one we saw, and I want to show this one to you in live mode. This is upper body bend. And this is upper body bend at the top of the back swing. And I'm actually going to have Chris face you right here. All right. All right. Go ahead and get the golf posture there. Good. And uh, let's go ahead and give you a golf club here. and just have to swing back to the top. One of the things that we would see with Chris at the top of his back swing, can you feel it for me? He didn't really get... Oh, that's a lift up, too. Yeah, and he lift up, too, as he just said. He really loses posture, and that upper back would really go towards the target. So if we consider that when we're looking at upper body bend, upper body bend very simply is where this golf club is in relation to the horizon. This is zero. When you get into good posture, you're going to be somewhere around 40 degrees. As you rotate into your backswing, as long as this golf club stays below the horizon, it's going to be a positive number. Chris was actually getting to where this would be a negative number, but a lot of that was stemming from that pelvis position in the initial part, which led to too much pelvis side bend, which got his trunk to go back towards the target. So these were all things that we said he wanted to have more center face contact, but the orientations his body was getting it was really making it tough to get that club 
uh, back to it, that back to impact. So we're gonna we're gonna start this program over here. It just ran through the cycle. We'll just click on bend the top again. We can go ahead and do a couple drills there. All the way back to the top. Good posture. I'm gonna get them nice and loaded. And just once again, I'm just gonna be a coach here, I'm not saying this is perfect back to the top, all in up. Good. I just want to get him where he feels nice and loaded, where he feels strong. And let's just say this is the position here where he feels strong. I set live. Go. Go ahead and relax. That's our drill. So just remember, you're the coach. You determine the orientations based on your teaching style and also what the player can physically do and what shot they're trying to hit. Are they trying to hit a high draw or a low cut? Right? There's not one perfect position for all this, and that's one of the big things about this webinar is once you can really build a program for your player that you feel comfortable with because it's totally customized for him, it also gives him a lot of confidence that this isn't just some stock program that all the rest of the players are doing. It's literally built for what we're doing. I can totally feel it. All right? So here's one of the great things now. This is what's brand new in the software. Now we can click Save. All right, all the changes that we just made, I can call this program training. I can click client program. If I save it as global, it'll be for all my clients. If I save it as client, it'll be just for Chris. So now I click save. So what's nice now is I go home, I go to start training, I go to programs, I go to my client programs, and there's all the programs that we can set up for Chris. You can do it by week. And a lot of times he'll come back in and we'll say, you know, hey, let's add a drill. Let's tighten up a tolerance. This week I was struggling with this. Can you measure me again? We might take something out of his program. So we're, we're constantly revising it, but it makes it really nice. So now all I have to do is I can click export, and I can literally go right to my client programs. A lot of you may be seeing this for the first time. I can go right to the program that we just built called training, and I can export it. And it's basically going to say, where do I want to save it? And I just save it to a folder. So a lot of times in my studio, I'll just save it into like Dropbox or I'll save it into the cloud. And that's what we'll do right now. We're going to go load it up on another tablet. Give us just a second and I'm going to show you my other area here that we can actually now get Chris over here and he can be doing the program we just built directly on his own. So give us one moment here. Let's head over to the other station and we'll show you how this works. So we've now loaded this on a Surface tablet, and we're ready to load the program here. So I'm going to bring this camera over, and I'm actually going to show you exactly how it works. So we've got this set up on a kiosk here. So we've got this set up on a kiosk. All he does is click train. You can see his three drills are loaded up on the program there. I've got it literally right in front of him on a, on a nice kiosk that he can stay in posture. We'll click the top right button to launch. Yep, and we're training. So literally two clicks were in there. He's got his program loaded. And literally what was nice about this little area is you don't have to have a huge setup to do this type of training. You can really just have a small setup. The player can walk in and out. And this can be really, really simple. So this little area right here is actually a 9 by 15 area. 15 feet wide, 9 feet deep, just enough room to swing a golf club. And now what we'll do is we'll have players come in here. We'll measure and assess them over the bay with a foot pressure and a launch monitor and 3D and 60, all that. But once the program's built, we literally come over here and we let them train. We let them train. So we just make it really, really simple. So you can kind of see Chris is going to go through a progression of drills here. And what's nice if he walk, wants to walk over to the keyboard, he can choose a different drill. You can pick, you can pick whatever one you want. I like it because I'm kind of quiet over here. People are watching me. I can kind of, uh, you know, I'm not a scratch golfer, so for me, being uh, have a little privacy and really work on my stuff is important. Yeah. So the great thing is he can just make you know his little motions. So we're on the 2040 drill right now. There's a little small backswing to get some separation. And it's just a small little move. So it's very simple. We can even start without a golf club, just hand across the chest, just a little move, and that's it. 
So when we get in the right tone, very, very simple for him to get that feedback. So what's great is we can load up all his drills, and I would recommend if you're going to be training a player like this, just have a small little kiosk set up or using a, a, a small little tablet. Uh, you can use a surface tablet. There's great Dells out now that are really inexpensive. And you can just simply load the program, send it over, let him train. And a lot of times we'll even build like little warm-up programs that he can come in and do before his round. Just literally, I'm not a TPI certified professional from the fitness side, but just things to get his body warmed up before a round, take advantage of some of the fitness activities that are also launched in the software. I like this. I'll remember that feeling in my core when I go to hit my, my shots. About thinking, you know, you know what? Everybody says do this, do that, but I just get this one feeling, and I know I'm in the right position, and for the right, a good shot. Yeah. And the nice thing is, Chris has put in, Chris has put in the time, so you know, he's really seen a difference in what's happened, and uh, it's been nice to see that pattern change. And really, once we went into the data and said, hey, here's a couple things that we can work on. They're not complicated, and I think that's the thing that we try and do is. A lot of times as coaches, we just want to make these programs as simple as possible, and we don't want somebody to leave it off us and go, hey, I've got to think about five things. My whole thing is just how do we get them moving? Like, let's just get them moving. I've actually got my certified trainer here, Scott. You know, we go to the gym every morning, and it's just, how do you move better? Well, you just move better, right? And he's constantly giving me cues, and it's no different than Chris going, hey, I want to swing better. And it's like, well, we just got to give you feedback so you don't have those poor reps anymore and you're not chasing things on the driving range. Where that one worked, that one didn't, and all of a sudden you're chasing ball flight and you're back to your old patterns. I can tell you when he leaves here, just from the conversations we've had, right after the training, we had a pretty good experience with, with ball flight. Excellent. Anything else you want to add? It's amazing that how much you need to engage your core. It's amazing how much posture matters. It's amazing how much tilt matters, ground matters. And if you don't have something like this, somebody can tell you all day to be like this. Well, if you don't want to machine, you should be you know, wow, really? I didn't think, I thought it was a great position. You really have no idea. And you can ask your friends and you are like, yeah, whatever. This year you get the feedback, practice it, you go out there. And I don't do anything perfect, but if, the more I do right, the more I take away from this, the better my results are. And I'm just trying to be the best offer I can with the right tools. Yeah. And it's just fun. You know, it's fun to watch. I think it's fun to watch the biofeedback on a player like Chris because once you build it, I think we've all dealt with a player where we prescribe something, they come back in the next session and we're working on the exact same thing again. And almost you, whether your rate's $100 an hour or $200 an hour, you know, it just takes a while for that to become a new pattern in the brain. And, and that, that pattern's got to get strengthened. We talk about this a lot. Like, you know, hey, I'm getting back to my old pattern. Well, there's something that's triggering that. And the more reps we do the right way, the other pattern's not going away. The new pattern's just getting stronger. The new pattern's just getting stronger. And that's why, you know, when I see, like, we'll get into these group coaching sessions here in just a couple minutes, you see these group coaching sessions when the coach is hanging there, it's great. But when the coach walks away and he's working with Johnny Smith, fourth person down, and player number one starts going back to their old pattern again, we live in a time now where that doesn't have to happen. You can walk away for 45 minutes and have the confidence that player number one is doing just as well as player number four, and then being able to build a business around that is really exciting. Amazing. So, so let's do this. So once again, we're going to be opening this up for uh, questions here in just a few minutes. The next step in this we really want to talk about is making sure that the business side of this. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with a software as far as building your programs. Uh, there's 144 activities, now I mentioned that in 3D. You've got golf, full swing drills, short game drills, TPI fitness exercises. There's just a lot of stuff to do, and every one of those things can be customized based on what the player can physically do in your coaching style. So there's a lot of things to do, but now how do we make sure that the business model makes sense around that. What we're going to do now is give you a little sneak peek into that. So Chris and I are going to head back over to the uh, studio here. Perfect. And what we'll do now is let's just talk a little bit about 
some of the things that you can do from a business side. Obviously, we can't cover everything tonight, all the different ways to use the K player, but hopefully you got a good glimpse, glimpse of how this ecosystem works. You measure and assess, you build a biofeedback program based on what you want to train, send it over, the player does the training on their own. So if that's something that seems like it makes sense, let's talk about now some of the opportunities from the business side. So historically, a lot of people now are moving to more coaching-based models. Why? Because revenue is more dependable from a month to month, and it also gets the player in a better opportunity to have the desired outcomes. We're going to see them more often. It's not the one-off lesson, and they're, they're actually thinking the right way. Obviously, historically, a lot of the ways that we thought about driving revenue in years past was golf coach wants to make more money. How do we do that? We increase our lesson rates. It's certainly one way to do it. And then we also have to spend more time on the lesson team. So that can be a little bit challenging because it's obviously all dependent on what we're doing. So if we look at this and this model, because we know a lot, I know a lot of successful coaches that are on the range all day. They charge a great hourly rate and it's a good business model, but there is one problem that we're really trying to help a lot of the coaches solve, and that's simply time. How do we help you free up your time so you can do other things with your business? Because once this interface is simple enough for the player to use, it opens up a whole new world. I mean, five years ago, KVS wasn't simple enough for most golf coaches to use, and we're still moving in a direction now where it's certainly getting a lot easier. It's going to get even more easier easy as time goes on, but this K player platform, it's literally two or three clicks and the, and the program's loaded and the players are moving. So that's what's new is the coach doesn't have to be there. Once that program's launched, think about all the things that you can do, whether it's you want to work with better players, uh, you want to travel on tour, you want to create a junior program or work with elite level juniors. There's a lot more opportunity. I just We deal with so many coaches that say, I just don't have the time to implement anything new right now of, of anything, a marketing program, new technology, because they're so busy teaching. This is one way that every time a player comes back and you're giving that same golf lesson, you can start thinking, this player just needs more reps, and I've got a way to provide them with more reps, and there's a way to build a business model around this. I could be using this hour in a more productive way. So. If we think about this image right here and you look at this funnel, the top of the funnel is potential billable hours, right? And a lot of this is based on the client's time or your student's time. So there's a lot of time that our students have. But if you look at the bottom of the funnel, this is obviously our time. So we can only do what we can produce. So our goal is to help you take the bottom of the funnel and widen it out to the top. Because all of a sudden, when you start getting into a situation where players can come in and train on their own, and now you're building coaching programs, you have a lot more hours and a lot more availability when everything doesn't have to be specifically with you one-on-one. -on -one. So how do we do this? Well, we clone the coach. But here's the important part. You're never going to get rid of the coach. Every player needs a coach, and a coach is never going to be technology. So the most important part that we're cloning about the coach is the training side because you need the coach's IQ, the coach's intellect to figure out why the ball and golf club are doing what they're doing, back up, and where are they going to attack first? Are they going to go back and get some new feels for impact? Are we going to go to set up posture? Are we going to try and change sequencing? Are we going to change things from the body side? Are we going to try and get somebody more mobility? There's a lot of ways to get them thinking better. There's a lot of things we can do to change patterns. But once that program is built and it's specific to giving somebody awareness of where their body is and how to move it better, this is where you can start to clone yourself. Not the measure and assess part. I want to make that really clear. That's you. That's you using your technology. But really, it's when you get into the act part, which is the coach and train. So there's really two sides of this that we want to discuss. And the reason why we wanted to spend a little bit more time on the business side is because I, I think the training side of it is pretty simple. A lot of you have seen biofeedback. But the business side of this is what's really so exciting because there's two types of programs you, you, can, you can offer. One, 
We can make on-site, we can help you develop on-site coaching programs. All right? So that's where players just like Chris were over there training in a small area. It could be in your building. It could be out on the driving range. I mean, that's just a kiosk with a Surface tablet set up so we can make it very, very simple to set up that program. The other thing is you've also got the opportunity to build up, build up group coaching programs. And this becomes the virtual assistant for having multiple players train at once. And there's a lot of times that we're sold out in these peak hours that we could really be filling out those peak hours more versus turning people away into the slower hours. So a lot of coaches have these slots of time we're going to talk about. They can't get players in. And we could really help do a better job of maximizing those hours that are peak, whether it's Saturday morning or it's uh, Wednesday after school. There's also opportunities now for remote-based coaching. So there's two things here that are really important. One is you can rent the system out to your players, and you can actually package it with your measure and assess. So once you build the drills and somebody says, you know, I just don't see myself coming to your facility, but you know what, I've got a, a simulator in my house or I've got a net in my garage, hey, did you know you can rent this for X amount of dollars per month? I'll build your program, and you can train out of your garage just like you're here. Why don't you come back and see me once a month and we'll build your program back and we'll make sure it's in good shape. All right? The other opportunity that you can do is really important, which is shed these geographical barriers because a lot of times we'll have a player go to a facility. It's happened here a lot. I wish you were closer. You know, I'm down, I'm 150 miles away. I heard about you. I came up. This was awesome today. I just wish you were closer. I'd come see you all the time. It's like, great. I actually can build a program for you. And very similar to what we're doing today, I could remote Skype with you. I could do a go-to meeting just like this. You could be in your garage. I could be setting live on your software at the top of your backswing remotely. There's a whole way now to attract people to your facility that don't need to be in this 30 to 45 mile radius. So think about the people that come on site for you, that come out of town, whether you offer programs where people fly in. All of a sudden now there's a way to connect with them when they're not even in the same city or state that you live in. So these unsupervised programs that we've touched on, a couple ways that you can think about them is, let's just say you do packages or you do monthly coaching programs. Let's just say it's very simple packages. Well, now you can start to bring in half hour, 45 minute unsupervised training time with your lessons. So you can give a golf lesson. Have a couple half hour training sessions during the week. The next week the player comes back into you. The best thing about this, it's not even the business model. It's the fact that the player's going to come in next week and they are going to be in a different place than when they've ever come in after a lesson prior. That's one thing I can tell you is once the program's built and they actually do it, they're going to come back in for that next Monday lesson in a different way than they have before because they just did 200 reps of what you asked them to do and they did it the right way you're not going to be back into the same golf lesson doing the same thing, taking $150 and not moving on. Because if they didn't master skill one and you're moving on to a more complex motor program, is that even really helping the student? And they're probably saying, they're going, why are we doing the same thing we did last week? Well, there wasn't enough reps today to put in. I mean, I got Scott here, my TPI. We're, we're just now moving on to things that they took a lot longer than I thought they would, but we're now at a point where we're actually moving on. But I understand it. I had to get phase one before we could move on to phase two. But for the long run, I'm really glad we did that we didn't jump around. So if you look at the sequence of the revenue opportunity, you charge for a lesson, let's just say it's $100 an hour. That could be on the low end in some places. For some of you, maybe that's on the high end. Let's just take that as an average. For every $100 lesson, there's two half hour $50 sessions or 45 minute sessions. You're going to find that 30 minutes training in the K player, if you do it right, uh, I don't think there's a lot of people that want to train for 45 minutes. I mean, it's they do 30 minutes of really quality training. I'd say just go hit some balls after that or go play golf. Um, it's really, really efficient in how it moves the body. So you want to play with that yourself. Literally get in, move, do three or four or five different drills for 20, 30 reps. You're going to find that after X amount of time, you're going to get a feel for how long you should block these sessions for. We recommend a half hour. You could certainly go longer. So the key here is lesson, two training sessions, lesson, two training sessions, 
right? So you just booked three hours of time, but now it's five hundred dollars in revenue. But it only took three hours. Players are getting better, and you're developing more revenue, not dependent on your time. So that's when you're working with a single student. The other opportunity is when you've got a player and you're in this group session, right? What always is one of our biggest challenges, it's you've got these popular time slots, and a lot of times, like after school, you've got juniors come in, and you're busy, and you're managing all these kids. That's the time when everybody wants to come see you, or it's Saturday morning, or it's Sunday morning. How many calls do you get? And you go, you know what, that's, I'm busy that day. Well, you know what, let me, let me try next week. And all of a sudden, they push out another week, versus having the opportunity of, hey, Bob, I, you know what, I've got your program built from last session. Now, I can't do a one-on-one -on -one with you, but I've got this slot over here I can reserve for you. How about come in, I'll spend five minutes with you, I'll get you calibrated, and let's get you moving, let's get you moving like we did last week. It's a great opportunity, and then you can start doing this from a grouping standpoint as well. So once you get one player going, and I think the progression of this is really important, you're not going to start with 6K players. You're realistically going to start with one, you're going to get it right. You're probably going to start in your facility, like we're doing here. And then as people start to come in, you'll get more remote based. But you want to get comfortable with it first, and then you can start to expand out. All right? But the group sessions are really great because you can get multiple people training at the same time, and you can charge a percentage of your lesson rate, whether it's one-third or it's two-third. Once again, until you get somebody in there and actually practicing the way you want them to, I think once you see that, you'll really start to determine the value on your own. And if you can walk away the way I do going, wow, that player's literally doing the motion the way I would if, if I was watching them, great. Now, why don't we charge our full rate? Because I can't communicate concepts and how is this going to affect ball flight and answer their questions and those things, but yeah, there's certainly a lot of value in moving the body right. So we talked about these geographical barriers. You can sign up, obviously, when they're at your facility or they're away from your facility. The coach can see the student on site. They can see it online. So there's a lot of different ways to get the communication going here. And there's a lot of different ways to have these interactions with people. Like now you travel with your cake player and you meet someone at a range, you could literally build the program right there and start a relationship where you could be remote-based coaching. So there's really a lot of opportunities outside the facility. So if you think about what we're talking about tonight, it's really more of building this ecosystem. Our company has been very focused on the golf coach, the fitness professional, and the medical professional for the last 12 years. Uh, we are still going to continue to do that. But what we really want to do now is we want to work with our coaches and our certified professionals to make sure we build an ecosystem with the players. And there's such a great way to build business opportunities with our coaches, and that's why you won't see us out selling K players directly to consumers without connecting them to the coach. Because for a player to go to their house, launch K player, see 144 activities, download some things, have no idea which one's going to help them, and then go, you know what, I did this thing and it didn't work. Well, no kidding, it didn't work because we didn't do the measure and assessment and we don't even know that what you loaded was right and we don't know that the ranges were customized based on what you could physically do. And this is why it's so important that we go through our coaches because you're the knowledge bank. You're the ones that are already doing this all day, every day. The technology can just make the coaching and training portion um, a little bit easier. So before we hop in and open it up for some questions, all right, which we'll be doing just momentarily, one of the things that we've done for this webinar is anybody that's interested in learning more about this, uh, we built a URL. It's k-vest.com forward slash start. If you go to that page and you sign up, we'll have a one of our consultants. We have 3D60 performance consultants all around the country reach out, have a 15, 20-minute phone call, and the whole goal of this would be find out if this is something that could help your business. Uh, you might want to learn more about the technology. They can do a webinar with you for that. But really that first conversation is can we help you get better outcomes for your players, and then what is happening from a business side that we can add value to. And one of the things that I'll just end on now, one of our simple models if you think about it is if you take two half-hour training sessions a day, at $50, hour, $50 per half hour session, that's $100 a day, that's $500 a week, that's $2,000 a month. 
Now, let's say you take two months off, you travel, or that's your downtime. That's $20,000 a year, and that's somebody training one hour a day. That's two people a half hour a day. So that's probably 10, 15% of your lesson book. So if you literally invested into this and you said, all right, what can this model actually do for me once I learn it? Well, I can tell you, if you get 25% of your time sold out on the best, no different than selling the simulator, but it's actually for golf performance improvement, you're going to be looking at between $30,000, $50,000 a year, but it's going to take time for you to get it going and build the programs for the players. But once it takes off, what's great about that is it's, it's, uh, you know, it's passive income. It's passive income, and that's 1K player, and you can, build, you can move on from there. So hopefully those just give you some ideas because I think the simpler and simpler this gets for the player, that's great, but we really want to make sure all the coaches understand that this has to go through you to be successful, and we really want you to make sure you build a great business model around it. So I think at this time, uh, let's check in and see if we've got some questions uh, from any attendees. Hey, Tony. This has been uh, fantastic. We have a lot of coaches here chiming in, uh, trying to see if this is a good fit for, for their students and their businesses. Uh, if you do have a question, make sure to, to put it over in the chat box over there on, on the side of your screen. Uh, but let's kick it off with, with just a few technical things, Tony, you could dive into. So sure. first, uh, how many sensors are required? Yeah, good question. So the KVAS system today is a four-sensor system. And let me see if I've actually... I didn't mention the... Uh, the new hardware today, and I'll just ping this on here real quick. So these are actually our new sensors, um, really small. You can actually see it's about the size of my thumb here, width-wise, um, super comfortable. So the KVAS system will be operating four sensors, so pelvis, thorax, lead arm, and hand. The K-Player system is two sensors, pelvis, thorax. Right now, those are where those sensors are located. So right now, you measure and assess with your four sensor system, and then you train with your two sensor system. Perfect, perfect. Uh, one more technical question here. Uh, the tablet that you, that you run this on, um, what do you recommend and, and what are some of the options for that? Yeah, right now we're primarily running on Microsoft devices, so the Surface, uh, that's what we're using over here to run the KVAS, the Surface Pro, Lavona Yoga tablet, those work really well. Uh, for the K-Player, because it, it doesn't require as much, it doesn't the system requirements uh, aren't as great, you can actually run that on a Dell tablet. Uh, pretty inexpensive, runs like $350 for the K-Player. So you've got you know, more of like a $1,000, $1,300 option for a tablet for your, for your KVAS, and then you've got a much lower cost option for your K-Player, which is great. And one of the things I highly recommend if you're going to go down this K-Player route, provide a tablet with it, player walks in with it set up just like that, like I would have that set up right there out on the range. If I got into the rental option where someone said, like we literally have people already starting to get these home and, and coaches charging weekly for this. So if my lesson rate's $150 an hour and I say, hey, you know what, you want to come see me, you know, twice this week is $300. How about $500 this week and you can train all week and it's unlimited? I mean, you can just start thinking outside the box. If you do that, you would want to send them home with the tablet, everything preloaded, put it in a backpack, and just everything's ready to go. You don't want to get them into downloading software, pairing sensors. You really want this experience to be turnkey. So that Dell tablet for that experience is great. Cool. Would you mind just, what is the, the pricing for the K player? Some people are asking here uh, for that, that full setup if they wanted to either get it for themselves or for students. Yeah, absolutely. So the K player is $2,495. So $2,500. That includes your pelvis sensor, your upper body sensor, pelvis garment, upper body garment. Uh, and that's also going to be the K player software. And then also the connection back to the KVEST. So you've got that import export functionality. So if you also have a KVEST system and you're upgraded to the latest KVS 7 software, this is where you can export programs and then import programs back in. So $2,500 for the K player. One thing to note is we extended our offer that we had at the show this year, the PGA show. So one thing we're doing right now is if you buy a KVS, uh, which is $6,000 for the 3D system, you actually get the K player for no charge. And the reason that we're doing that right now is we want to build this ecosystem 
So somebody doesn't just get the cave as get started with the vest and never get this model going. We want people to get this month going right away. So as soon as you build a program, all of a sudden you don't go, let me just keep it on my KVAS and just let me just get this going first. You're already starting to think, why don't I just transfer it over to the Surface tablet and have the conversation with my player? How many times would you like to come back in this week and, and work over here by yourself? What if they say, hey, how about once or twice a week? All of a sudden you're here working with a player and they're working over there. I think the mind's going to start ticking like, wow, I can start doing this more often. That's the reason we're doing that promotion, KVAS with K player. We want to help you get that going right out of the gate. Perfect. Um, we have a good question here from Rich about how many sensors again. Uh, do you need four to measure and then two to train with the K player? So do you need six total to do that? Or like how many sensors do you need exactly? Yeah, so four sensors to measure. So the K vest is four. So literally, uh, let me just pull this up right here. This will probably just be a good visual. Let me unplug this. So literally, when you get your system in the mail, this would be the case that it would come in. Um, so very simply, you'd have your four sensors. This is your KVS system. Comes with all your charging cables built in. They charge right in the case. You literally just take one plug on the wall. This plugs into a plug that goes into your computer, your laptop. Literally everything just charges right in the case for the KVS. For your K player, when you receive it in the mail, you would just have two sensors. So you literally would get two cases just like this. One would be your KVS, one would be your K player. So you keep this for your evaluation and your assessment system. When you have your K player system, then you can simply, when they want to rent that out, you can just hand them this box, put the tablet right on top, and put it in a backpack and they're out the door. So six sensors total, but you really only use four max at one time. Emma has a great question here in regards to a PT office. Uh, are there examples to work this in uh, in regards to insurance, self-pay, uh, non-coach medical providers? Yeah, that's a great question. And I know I said, I said the word coach a lot tonight. And uh, this is definitely open up. This is open to all professionals. Uh, my background as a, as a golf professional is more on the coaching side. But definitely on the medical side, there's a lot of things that you can do with this. So you can use this for range of motion evaluation. Um, there's a lot of exercises in the software, obviously, that you can give players or, or athletes biofeedback with. And then you get into the insurance billing side. As you know, you can bill for biofeedback. You can bill for neuromuscular re-education. So there's a lot of things that you can do on the billing side where, yes, you can get somebody program built, and as they're doing their rehab, you make sure they're doing their rehab more effectively. So completely, whether it's the fitness side, and you're trying to grow more of your cash-based business, right? That's obviously one opportunity there. The other opportunity is on the medical side where you're growing your cash-based business or you're focusing more on the insurance side. Um, both of those are opportunities. Cool. Uh, Mike is curious, is this all portable to take to the range, the KVEST and the K player? It is, yeah. Everything's totally portable. I mean, what's so great now is you can literally just take your Surface tablet or Lavona Yoga, whatever it is, you literally just grab that case and that's all you need. So probably another important answer there is the sensor battery life on the new sensors. Probably anywhere just conservatively six to eight hours. I think seven hours is about the average. So, you know, yeah, that's a pretty long uh, range session. So I think if you've got your tablet out there and you've got the system on and you're just using it for training, you know, you can literally just bring a, a little stand with you um, that fold up very simply or you can just set it on the ball rack um, so completely portable, uh, very easy to take out in the range and, and even on the golf course. So the whole goal is to get this more mobile, more portable. We know a lot of coaches have studios just like this where you've got all the bells and whistles and all the technology, but we also know that the game of golf is not played in the studio, but it's also it's a great learning environment. We've also got to get this technology out of the studios because patterns change. We all know patterns change on the range. Patterns change even more on the golf course, and patterns change even more when we apply a little heat. So to be able to take it out on the golf course and test those patterns, all of a sudden water pops out right, you know, and all of a sudden those hips fire a little first, and you know, all of a sudden we block it right. It's like, well, that pattern didn't show up in the studio, but it showed up under a little heat. It's kind of nice to be able to have that data. So really important to have it mobile. No, that, that's amazing. Uh, we have more than a handful of people here. I think after seeing those, those new sensors are curious in upgrading. Uh, how do they go about doing that? 
Yeah, just reach out if you if you're a current KVAS customer, uh, just reach out to your local account rep. Just uh, ping them an email and just say, hey, interested in seeing the new technology. Uh, we've really expanded our presence across the U.S. and internationally. So there's a really good chance there's a local rep right in your area. And more often than ever, we want to actually get out and see you. So make sure you reach out to your local account rep. Get in touch with them. They're going to be happy to come out to your facility. If it's not close, the, best, we, the worst thing we can do is we can get on an online webinar, talk about how the upgrade process, but also make sure, just as we said before, let's spend 15, 20 minutes talking about how we can help you expand these opportunities you know, with this new platform. Perfect. Um, this might be one of our, our last questions here. If you have any others, make sure to, to put it in the chat here before we wrap up. Um, this is kind of a, a big picture question, but how do you get started with this all? So, I mean, you get a K player. Um, how do you get going with it? How do you get your free, first students to buy into, uh, buy into one of these programs and get started? Yeah, well, I would say if you don't have a KVAS system yet, no matter what you want to go through, you're going to want to go through the level one certification that we offer online just to get a pretty good understanding of what the metrics mean. Um, what has been, just some of the simple things we talked about tonight, just pelvis bend can have such an influence on a lot of things that we see, just that one metric and how to train it. So when you start getting into bends and side bends and rotations and sequences, not all that stuff is in the K player, but you can use the K player to change all that information for a player. So having an understanding a little bit about the measure and assess is also helpful for the training. But one of the great things about the K-Player software is as well, um, let me see if I've still got it launched up here. And I'll just bring up the k even just for a second and go home here. One of the nice things is this interface looks very similar. Notice here there's HD videos for every activity in the software. So the great thing is if you're a golf professional and you come in here and you look at your filters and you come into filters and you go, movement type, I want full swing drills. Boom, here's all your full swing drills. And there's a ton of stuff in there for address, top impact, things that will change kinematic sequence. If you're a fitness professional or a medical professional, you're going to click on fitness. So now you come in and you go, all right, well, I certainly know what standing FMT incline row is, but how does KVEST use biofeedback? So now you've got an HD video. You've got an HD video there right inside the software on how we use biofeedback. So the great thing is, I always say, like, if I'm standing behind a coach watching them give a golf lesson or I'm in a medical facility watching somebody do an evaluation or rehab a knee or a back or a shoulder or a fitness professional working on core strength or stability, I'm always sitting back there going, here's how, I'm not, we're not going to change what you do. We're actually just going to make your job easier because I'm going to show you in here how you can apply biofeedback to that so you can let the, the, the player or the athlete self-discover. So the great thing is, one way is to go KVAS cert route, really get the full understanding of measure and assess. So by the time you get to train, you have a little more background. The other side of it is just launch the K-Player software, go through every activity that's, that's for you in your domain, and just sit there and watch these HD videos, and it'll say if we're doing a, you know, an incline chop or whatever it is, like where, what biofeedback are we using? Are we trying to keep the pelvis stable? Is the biofeedback to get more rotation out of the T-spine? Like, are we trying to not have lateral tilts as we're rotating? Like, how are we building these exercises? So just watching a quick 90-second video, you could apply this in your practice tomorrow. And I think that's one thing that's very different about where KVS was 12 years ago or even five years ago. There was a pretty significant learning curve. But if you start with biofeedback and then you move into biomechanics, the learning curve of this becomes a lot shorter. Amazing. Thanks so much, Tony. It's uh, top of the hour here. We're going we're gonna to have to call it wraps. Definitely see that there are more questions. We'll do our best to get in touch with you um, and get that answered. Um, but do you want to close this out here, Tony? Yeah. I'd just like to uh, thank everybody uh, for being on tonight. I appreciate it. I hope you, you took something away that can help your players, help your athletes, and also get you thinking about how to build better business models. I'd like to thank uh, Chris for coming in tonight. Uh, appreciate that, and look forward to crossing paths with all of you in the future. And I know a lot of you are asking about, about the price in here as well. Make sure to go to that uh, URL. Tony, do you want to pull that up on the screen here yeah. real quick yeah. again? 
So if you want to get in touch um, and make sure it's a good fit for you, just make sure to visit this URL here. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.